Hi, and welcome back to the wonderful world of the scientific hypothesis. My name is Brad Alger, and today we need to go into a topic that you've undoubtedly heard something about or may even know a lot about, but probably haven't thought very much about, the statistical hypothesis. Now, this video is not about statistics, but rather about the way in which the statistical hypothesis is related to my favorite topic, the scientific hypothesis. Now, as you can probably guess, the two are not the same at all, but the distinctions between them are rarely explained or even mentioned. And this is unfortunate because they tend to occur together in the same context, for instance, the same scientific report. And a lack of a distinction between them tends to blur them together. And this can cause confusion even in the minds of people who know a lot about science. All right then, let's look at statistical and scientific hypotheses. We'll compare their explanatory nature, the methods of testing them, their interrelationships, and their relationships to the physical world. To review again, scientific hypotheses are explanatory. They try to answer the question, why? We use empirical methods to test them indirectly by testing their predictions, and scientific hypotheses can be falsified, but not shown to be true. So here is a quick overview of the statistical hypothesis. First of all, it doesn't explain anything. It's just a statement about the distribution of certain data values, and I'll show an example in a moment. It's part of a mathematical testing procedure, and it's tested directly. Like the scientific hypothesis, a statistical hypothesis can be falsified, though not shown to be true. And a statistical hypothesis is often used to test predictions of a scientific hypothesis. In a little bit more detail, the imaginary distribution of values assumed under a statistical null hypothesis essentially is the assumption that the experimental treatment had no effect. So we might have a distribution of values, set, say people's body weights, something like this bell-shaped curve with a mean of mu one, now, our scientific hypothesis might make the prediction that the distribution of values under our experimental treatment will look more like this distribution with a mean of mu2. To test the null hypothesis, we apply a mathematical formula to the experimental data to determine how much they differ from the distribution assumed by the null hypothesis. If the experimental data are significantly different you reject the null hypothesis, and you may decide that the experimental treatment did in fact have an effect. So here's a simple sort of example. Imagine we have two groups of people, and we're interested in eating behaviors and body weights, and we wonder if we can possibly explain the difference in body weights by their eating behavior. And so the scientific hypothesis would be attempting to answer the question, why? The statistical hypothesis, on the other hand, via a null hypothesis, would simply ask the question of whether the groups differ or not according to some variable. The scientific hypothesis, again, is an unexplanatory device, whereas the statistical hypothesis is fundamentally non-explanatory. Now, this implies that scientific hypotheses will be tested in very different ways than statistical hypotheses. For example, to determine the answer to the question why, a whole variety of empirical methods, observations, and experiments can be used to test the scientific hypothesis. So for example, in the question of the body weights, we could do biochemical tests, we could look at food diaries, we could do controlled experiments where we regulate people's eating behaviors. Statistical hypotheses, on the other hand, ultimately are gonna involve calculations. Now, there are, of course, different kinds of statistical tests that we could apply, but at the end of the day, calculations involving numbers are how we're going to test the statistical hypothesis. So the scientific hypothesis tests concepts, whereas statistical hypotheses test numbers. And these considerations have another slightly different implication. We can say that the empirical content of the scientific hypothesis is absolutely crucial for its meaning and understanding. Altering any of the words in it may change the hypothesis in very fundamental ways. The words matter. Here, for example, is a scientific hypothesis. 
it says that the people's cholesterol is high because they eat lots of burgers and shakes daily. If we were to change just a couple of words here, we get a different hypothesis. This would say that people's cholesterol is low because they eat several bowls of oatmeal daily. Obviously, a completely different hypothesis. Predictions are different and the tests are different as well. We could contrast that situation with this one, where on the one hand, we could be looking at the numbers of stars in different galaxies or the number of bacteria in different human guts because statistical hypotheses are about numbers. Their empirical content, the objects they refer to, don't determine the kind of test that is done. And the kinds of objects that could be studied may not even exist. Here's a table comparing the two kinds of hypothesis. The scientific hypothesis is fundamentally explanatory, whereas the statistical hypothesis is non-explanatory. The scientific hypothesis is the primary concept. It implies or makes predictions that may be tested with statistical hypotheses. They are therefore subordinate. We test the scientific hypothesis indirectly by testing its predictions, whereas we test the statistical hypothesis directly by making calculations. Scientific hypotheses are tested with a wide variety of empirical methods, that is, observations and experiments. Statistical hypotheses are tested fundamentally with mathematical methods, and even though there's a range of different mathematical tools one can use, it's much more limited than the range of empirical tests available to study scientific hypotheses. The empirical content is absolutely essential to a scientific hypothesis, and the statistical hypotheses find that the empirical content is far less essential to the ways in which we test them. Both scientific and statistical hypotheses can be found false, but not shown to be true. It seems to be an unfortunate historical accident that the statistical hypothesis, which is such a fundamentally different concept, has the same name of hypothesis. It's important, however, to keep them straight. And from now on in these videos, when I refer to hypothesis without otherwise qualifying it, I always mean the scientific hypothesis. Thanks for watching. Remember to give it a thumbs up if you like it and subscribe to hear more. See you next time.